because I'm going to talk about the challenges of building uh, a company uh, to do um, puzzles. And a lot, of the, a lot of this is academia stuff. And um, so this is a little different. Um, so I'm a puzzle guy. And uh, I, it's one of my passions. And I'm also a software guy. And this is some of the stuff I've built over the years. Um, and this was the first opportunity in my career to combine these two passions and build something which is puzzle and technology. So first, a slight digression. So you know a little bit about me. I was on a plane yesterday. Get on the plane. The guy sitting next to me knows nothing about me. Um, I asked him a question or two. We hadn't even taken off yet. Um, he says he's an electrical engineer, says a couple other things. And he says, do you know a guy named Martin Gardner? <laughs> like, whoa. And then he proceeds to tell me about a puzzle of Martin's that he solved when he was 11 and how it's affected his life. And now he's an electrical engineer, and he's been one for 30 years. Um, so Martin's affected all of us. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about pizzazz. This is our vision. A um, little sales pitch in here. I'm going to keep this part as short as I can, but you need to know what we're doing. And Kindle for Puzzles is one of the good descriptions of what we're doing. Before, this is sort of what existed. State of the art, not very good apps, uh, low quality, poor experience pretty much for everyone in the ecosystem. So we looked at that, and we said, we can do a lot better. And here's sort of a list of what we did that's new. Great experience, uh, uh, great puzzles, uh, respect to authors, um, handwriting recognition on an iPhone when the keyboard's too small, things like that. So of course, you know, that sounds easy, but there's lots and lots of challenges. And so I'm listing here some of the things that are different between a, you know, a puzzle technology company and different types of companies that we might be considered to be uh, similar to. So the, <clears throat> the first one is really significant because you know, we build and we build and we build and we haven't shipped something yet. Finally, you ship something. That's when you can make your first dollar. And um, it's, it's uh, you know, different in that respect. There's also some technical advantages. Um, very short feedback cycle. So we can actually take feedback from users. We can learn something. We can ship another product. Um, testing is much easier because we don't have something like a massive game with 500 levels and all this sort of stuff. Puzzles are relatively easy to test. Doesn't mean we don't have any testing. But in terms of other software, it, it certainly seems easier because we can just simply just use it. Um, so some of the highs of, of what we've done. Uh, we have built something that you know, I think is fantastic. If you try it, I think you'll agree. Um, our, at the bottom, happy customers. And you know, that makes me happy every day. It doesn't pay the bills, but it makes me really happy. Um, and we've built something which is general purpose, trying to do it for the future of puzzles. And um, you know, that feels pretty good. Um, here's some charts. You've got to throw some charts. And these charts sort of look like you want them to. Downloads are going up. Active users are going up. Uh, 25 minutes a day, people using the app. These all sound good. Use the distribution. This is actually an interesting curve because there's a problem called a whale. Uh, um, the casino guy here, he, he knows about whales. They're the people who come to the casino and they spend all the money. Well, that's actually a problem because if you lose your whales, you lose your revenue. And so pretty much you know, all the casual games, um, <clears throat> Farmville, et cetera, they have that problem. So we don't have that problem, and that's what that curve shows. OK, so that also looks great. But in fact, there's lots of lows, too. You know, we can't just be a tech company. We can't just be a puzzle publisher. We can't just be a puzzle creator. We have to be everything. Um, it's expensive to get started. The app store is very, very difficult to market in. And you know, whatever we do, we're drowned out by games with a $100 million budget. Um, competitors don't play fair. That's an interesting one. Uh, I can talk for an hour about that. Um, <laughs> so uh, some of the lessons. Um, you know, it's harder than you think. It, it takes longer than you think. All this stuff, you think, oh, I'll just do a puzzle. I'll just do an app. It, it, is, it is really hard in terms of the, uh, the size. Um, so would I do it again? This was the spoiler in the, in the uh, abstract. Whoops, I'll go back to that. So yeah, I love it. And my question for all of you is, you know, what are you passionate about? I'm doing this because I'm passionate about it. You know, we're not done. We're still working on it. I could really use that second to be a dollar for fundraising. Um, <laughs> but I'm passionate about it, and I love it. OK, last thing. Um, so this is a, a single mock-up of my, my uh, exchange gift, which if you come and want to play with it, you don't need scissors and tape. 
Uh, the exchange gets you have to assemble the cubes yourself. Uh, and then also because you have to always be marketing, uh, there's a free ebook from Pizzazz. Okay, thank you.